Hey guys, welcome back to the car. Thanks for joining me. I'm about halfway through my trip, my journey down to London. I thought I'd quickly stop off and grab a matcha because I am lagging. Like it can't just be me. I know it's not just me, but why do I get so tired driving on like ugly, boring motorway drives? Like if, if it's scenic, oh my God, I could drive all day. But when it's just gray motorway, not really anything else, I get so sleepy. I wanted to get some food, but there's nothing I really want here. So that will just have to wait till I get to London. Yes, I'm putting four sugars in this. So don't judge me. There's no syrup in it. Could do with more sugar you know it's not bad though this will do i'm not getting back out of the car it's raining now as well oh my god it's my first time ever going through a drive through to pick up a matcha though please tell me why it's so awkward like when you drive up to pay you then have to wait for them to make your drink so you're just kind of sitting there whilst they're having a chat <laughs> it's so awkward tell me if this is like a thing but it's tuesday i left around 11 there are so many lorries on the road i've never seen that many before and it's terrifying there's been a few lorries that are just carrying loads of huge logs and i'm like this is about to be some final destination shit like but at least that's been keeping me awake right anyway i thought i'd just get myself situated and like halfway through the drive i thought we should do like a little life update kind of vibe whilst i drive because this is going to take up most of my day and just have a little catch up and just share what i've been up to with you guys because obviously i haven't been around on here for a while it's really lonely in the car without Bronson because usually when I'm driving he's with me. What better way to not be lonely than to have you guys keep me company so let's get this show on the road then I guess. I just need to concentrate for a second here. How's everyone been? I feel like we've not had a proper chat in ages and I do feel like this is the perfect time to do it because in vlogtober it's, it's not real time but it's the closest to real time that we're gonna get in vlogs and yeah I just want to know how you guys have been doing how did the summer treat you like how's October treating you how are you finding this year I mean as we all know my year's not been ideal but nevertheless like I'm very grateful obviously I've not been around much on any of my socials really this year for those of you guys that don't no, my rhinoplasty i ended up getting an infection and it ended up being dragged out for months and then it got so bad that i got an abscess on the tip of my nose so i had to i was in and out of a and e like i think about five times and because they were so overrun they weren't able to deal with me properly so i wasn't getting the right treatment um so it just kept getting worse and worse wow i really went straight into it didn't i um and so with all of that, basically I had to have another operation here just to clear the infection, basically just like drain all of the infection out of my nose. So they cut my nose back open and drained it, but they said that because the infection was so bad, they had to remove some tissue from my nose. So basically it's not, it doesn't look the same as when I had it done. And they did say it has nothing to do with like my surgeon or anything like that. It was just really, really bad luck and obviously I didn't get the right medical intervention at like soon enough basically but yeah it was that was really difficult for me to accept and on top of that like obviously sharing this with you guys i had so many like so many of you guys were supportive and i'm really really like grateful i just want to say thank you but i did also have a lot of like nasty messages about my my choice to have surgery um and so for that to happen for the infection to happen it made me feel really vulnerable and kind of embarrassed and like scared to come back online and not only that like my nose looked it just wasn't great like it really wasn't great and it, it's definitely improved now because it's been almost a year since the surgery and almost well it's been quite a few months since you know the whole infection and stuff so obviously like the swelling's gone down and it's kind of settled a little bit but it still isn't the nose that I had and that I paid for and that's really really frustrating especially because I only had it for a couple of months before everything went downhill honestly like my confidence completely dropped guys I really hope you don't mind but I need to put some sunglasses on yeah the dip in my confidence was substantial for so many reasons obviously like living my life online sharing my life online my appearance is a big part of my job especially when it comes to the beauty side of what I do and to, to look at my face and not recognize it after having the infection um, and to be really unhappy with it and also now my face has changed so much because of when they drained it and they had to remove the tissue that I don't really have a good side like I don't really know my face I know it's like all 
a first world problem but it, it is a real thing and like everything's relative but it, you know it still was really stressful for me because yeah my face is a huge part of my job and it was just hard for me to come back online especially after all of the criticism and negativity surrounding me having a nose job in the first place that was basically it i just couldn't face coming back online and then on top of it having so many months off of work i lost work so i've not really made any money this year and that has also you know it really did shatter my confidence and also just not being able to work i didn't feel like myself um, and then when I was able to start working again, once it kind of healed again, I just wasn't getting much work, I guess, because sometimes summertime can be a bit more quiet. And I also feel like because I hadn't posted anything for so long, brands didn't look at me and think, oh yeah, she's consistent, like she can offer us this, this and that. Um, so I think I just wasn't really in anyone's kind of field of view. And so that was quite stressful as well. However, that's not to say that I'm not super grateful like I realize I'm in a very privileged position and I feel really grateful that like I was able to support myself through the last few months without having any money come in because I know that for a lot of people that just wouldn't be possible it is getting to the stage now where I'm like basically blown through my savings and I need to get back in the game but you know I'm starting to get work again and it, it's fine like like I said I am so blessed I am so lucky and I feel very privileged that I've been able to just take the time off that I need and very lucky to have such a supportive community like you guys are amazing I just want to say thank you for the fact that you're even still here guys 85 miles until my next turn off so yeah like I I basically after everything that I'd been through as well I just wanted to take the time off to kind of find myself again spend time with my friends enjoy my summer enjoy my birthday and that's exactly what I did and the thing is as well I did vlog quite a bit I guess like we're all our biggest kind of sabotager the self-sabotage was real like the perfectionism in me just made it so that I couldn't post the vlogs I've got so many vlogs and a lot of them are edited as well but I just couldn't bring myself to post them because I didn't recognize that person I you could just tell like I was not myself I, I didn't resonate with myself and I didn't recognize who I was not physically but like mentally like I just was in a really weird place and so I just wasn't happy with the vlogs and I do feel happy with my decision to not post them because I feel like it would be posting just for posting's sake but yeah like lots of things happened I saw Sam we've not seen each other for probably about three years at this point which is ridiculous but we've both just had so much shit going on with my friend Hannah we all went to see Scissor at BST and that was the like my favorite thing ever the fact that I've not seen Sam in so long and that's what we're doing together it was just like it was emotional man it was so good and that was like a few days before my birthday I've been up and down to London quite a few times I've got myself a car um, I actually bought this off of my friend he was selling it for a really really good deal and I just thought you know what I wanted a car can't really afford a brand new one don't really want to spend the money on it even if I could and this was just like an opportunity that presented itself and I thought yeah let's body do it and yeah I'm very happy with it so like a little old banger and I love it it's my favorite thing just having that independence and that freedom again and not having to get the train down to London oh and just the comfort and the like what's the word the practicality of having a car especially with a dog and I can bring so much more stuff with me now because I'm not carrying it on public transport so that's been really really awesome but yeah I just wanted to like come and basically talk a little bit about what happened because I know I haven't really fully addressed it I filmed the whole time I had the infection and stuff and guys it was bad like when I say it was bad it was bad like I wow and I definitely do want to put that video up because I think it's important for people to know like what can can happen what can go wrong and like how to best deal with it because I feel like I could have I maybe should have just gone private instead of going through the NHS it would have probably just been dealt with and not developed into such a bad infection if I had maybe just gone private and like got the attention that it needed straight away if there's anything I can share with you is that I can hopefully have you guys learn from my mistakes. So yeah, I do want to post that video at some point. I need to edit it, but basically I've, I've just not been able to look at that footage because it is very triggering. Like it was quite traumatizing and I just don't want to see myself in that position. Um, so I've not really been able to look at that footage, but 
I'm gonna try and get that edited for you guys soon. It got to a point where I was so low that I ended up having to go back on antidepressants, you guys. I think the amount of antibiotics that I was on as well played a huge part in like just my mental health, my physical health, everything. My skin went crazy. Like my skin was so bad for like quite a few months after the infection and the antibiotics. And that was really upsetting as well. There's nothing that makes me feel more confident than having good skin. So when my skin breaks out, and when I say it breaks out, it wasn't like a, a couple of spots. Like I had spots in every area of my face and it was just continuous for ages. It was painful, my skin was dry, it was tight. The spots were just sore without me even touching them. That played a huge role in my mental health as well because I already was uncomfortable with how I looked and then that on top of it. And then just the discomfort of it as well, like physically. Um, it just wasn't nice that along with everything else not being able to work not knowing who I am or feeling like feeling like I'm just watching my life go by and I don't recognize the person that I'm watching I'm not doing enough or anything really because I literally can't I did end up going back on antidepressants and there's no shame in that and I just want to say I can't tell you how much better I feel now now that I decided to take that step and go back on them like I haven't been on antidepressants for like over three years I think and it was getting to the point where I was like I need to do something about my mental health or it's gonna go get really really bad really really quickly I knew what I had to do and honestly I can't even tell you how much better I feel this feels different than the last time although I think last time I was also self-medicating with like other things and I wasn't really interacting with people but now like just even my interactions just going outside like I don't feel like I'm gonna have a panic attack every 20 seconds my baseline is generally like higher so I just feel a lot more positive a lot more able to just like do the basic things like I wasn't showering guys I, I wouldn't I was just lying down all day I wouldn't shower I didn't want to talk to anyone like I was so depressed all I can say is thank God for antidepressants and yeah this is my PSA to say everybody has issues everybody goes through it including me you're not alone if you're feeling like you need help I feel like if you do feel like you need help go and get help I promise you whether it's antidepressants don't work for everyone but whether it's antidepressants therapy whatever whatever the option is like just go and get help I promise you just even taking that step makes you feel so much better just just the fact that you've done that for yourself will make you feel better let alone like the actual healing with the meds with the therapy I I couldn't recommend it enough I, I promise you like just acknowledging that there's something wrong and getting the help changes everything. I just feel so capable now. Like, I, I feel like I just get up and get stuff done. Do you know what I mean? Whereas before, I literally couldn't. I was frozen. I was paralyzed. I felt like I was in a really bad, like, sleep paralysis dream. And I just couldn't get out of it. So, yeah, that's all to say. You're not alone if you're feeling shit. And there's no shame in asking for help. There's nothing wrong with taking antidepressants. Like, some of us just have a lower baseline there's nothing you can do about it except get the medicine and the help that you need yeah I don't know I hope that this can help some of you guys like I always want to be open and honest and transparent with you guys and just let you know that like I said we are all going through something isn't this fun guys I literally feel like I've unlocked a new level in my vlogs by having a car again like it's been years since I had a car I don't even know if I vlogged when I had a car I passed my test in like 2011 that's telling you guys how old I am <laughs> but yeah as I was saying I have not been able to look at that footage yet so please forgive me it's just it is a lot and I've just needed to do everything I can to like get over the fact that it happened for those of you guys asking if I've had anything else done to my nose or to my face in general I got a really horrible comment in my first vlogmas vlog where somebody just said "Ew, like your nose looks so botched I wish like you looked so much better before you should have just left it alone basically and I'm just like first of all thank goodness I have thick skin because that could be really really detrimental to some people that could really really have a bad impact on someone else and also like imagine I liked the way my nose looked now like it's just rude like your input is not necessary what's the benefit of telling me that like what do you gain from that nothing I don't gain anything from it you're already telling me something I know and you could be triggering me massively I just think some people sometimes think that 
people that share their lives online aren't real people and it's just not the case and I think those of you that do leave nasty comments and unnecessary comments just need to remember that I'm a real person but yeah for those of you guys asking whether I've had anything done since then the only thing I've had done is a little bit of Botox just recently I haven't touched my face otherwise at all I haven't even had my jaw Botox so I think that's partially why my face looks different as well is because my jaw's wider. I kind of realised that I prefer my face without it. But that moves me on to where I'm going now. I'm going to London and then I am travelling with my parents to Turkey. So it has been almost a year since my surgery. It's been literally 11 months just under by the time I'll be in Turkey. Yeah, if you guys haven't guessed already, I am going for my revision. It's been a long time coming. The time's come around really quickly as well. Like I'm super nervous also after everything I've been through but I also know that I'm not happy with it now and again like I said I, I had filler in my face before in my nose that's the other thing sorry another tangent that really pisses me off is that people are like your nose was fine before I'm like that still wasn't my natural nose like it still wasn't my natural nose this is closer to my natural nose except a little bit smaller width wise anyway yeah I'm going back for my revision with my surgeon the same surgeon immediately he was like yeah you can come back for a revision anytime when everything was going on at the beginning of the year but I wanted to wait obviously just to let it settle and see how it would come out and stuff and yeah I obviously I'm not I'm not happy with it thankfully I don't have to pay for the revision I do have to pay the hospital fees but only because it's a private hospital compared to like the initial surgery and how much a normal like revision fee would be is literally nothing in comparison so I'm more than happy to pay that because he is the only person that I want to touch my nose I think it's gonna be quite an easy fix they said I'd only have to be there for about four days after surgery max which is really great like I'm super happy about that hopefully it won't be as like traumatic to my face and my body I really feel like all I need to do is just get the tip sorted and hopefully so I've been left with a really horrible scar under here from when they drained it they just didn't take much care at all which is fine I get it it's not you're not doing a rhinoplasty you're just like it's a medical intervention but it would have been nice to not have the really gaudy scar hopefully my surgeon can kind of fix sort out my scar a little bit and my columella have it like hanging down a bit more again because the scar is so bad it's like tight into my septum now and it looks really weird from the side but yeah that's the update on that because I've been getting so many questions otherwise other updates obviously I was talking a lot about wanting to move back to London again right now I don't think that's gonna be a thing that we do and see the, the thing with me is like Manchester it's not my favorite place to live like I don't hate Manchester by any means but I just don't it, I don't love living there but the flat right now that we have I just I love it so much because it feels more like home it's really hard for me to just want to up and leave and also just the thought of like doing the whole move back down to London like moving up to Manchester was a lot and it was bloody expensive as well and also just finding a flat in London it is ridiculous at the moment like it's so expensive it's out of control like where do they go off where I used to live before I moved to Manchester I lived in East London in like quite a nice little area I was paying two grand a month which I know is absolutely ridiculous like it's ridiculous obviously I moved in there with my ex and then we broke up and I was just like well I've got to figure this shit out um, and I ended up loving that I really missed my flat like I loved it so I figured out a way to pay it I just worked really hard and I kind of rationalized it in my head you know it's my office it's my safe place it's my home obviously COVID was a thing then and I had my dad with me as well so I didn't want to move him around and it just made sense to stay there but yeah at the time that was like a big two bed two bathroom with a, like a big balcony like a winter garden they call it and that was two thousand pounds a month right that was not including bills or anything else either now in that same complex area place that I lived a one bed is like two and a half grand what that's outrageous I don't know I just feel like until I'm like comfortable enough to be paying ridiculous prices where it doesn't where I don't have to think about it it's just not worth it to me like the market is out of control at the moment and like nothing's that nice for, for the price that you're paying if I have to spend another year in Manchester 
who knows we'll see but i'm in no rush to head back down to london right now because it the thought of the thought of it alone is just so stressful i'm definitely a lot happier now i've got more freedom with the car so i can pick and choose when i want to head down it's cheaper actually for me to drive down than to get the train which is also amazing i've made like a really 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 great friend she lives in my building which is awesome because we're basically neighbors the first time we ever, ever hung out i went round to her house and i whoa there was almost an accident just then. I didn't leave her house until five in the morning. <laughs> and it usually goes like that most of the time. <laughs> you know when you just meet someone and you know that you guys were meant to be friends. As much as I wanna come back home to London, I'm now like not so much in a rush because I do feel a little bit more content in Manchester. I'm just trying to think what else I need to update you guys on. Oh, this is really good guys. It's going so much quicker now. I've only got an hour and a half left. I've been yapping my heart away. <laughs> I wanted to say as well, obviously we haven't had a proper catch up in so long. If there's anything that you want to ask me about what I've been doing or just anything, or if there's anything that you felt like I could catch you guys up on in the vlogs, because obviously it's been such a long time that I'm out of the loop with like where we left off. Just ask away guys. This is like an open conversation. It, I literally, Whenever I'm vlogging, I just feel like I'm spending time with my friends. Yeah, I just, I wanna know what you guys have been up to as well. Like there's always certain people that are popping up in my comments as well and I recognize your names and like, I just wanna know how you're doing. I just wanna know how you're doing. Guys, the sunshine has come out, girl. She came out to play. I'm actually getting a bit of a sweat on. <laughs> I'm really excited about this trip to Turkey. We've made it into a bit of a holiday. The first place we're going is not actually Istanbul. It is my dream destination for Turkey. Like I've wanted to go for a while now. I, it just looks stunning and like so different to anywhere else that I've been. So I'm so excited to take you guys along with me. And I'm so excited to go on holiday with my parents as well because we've never been like abroad together. I've been, oh, obviously I have with my mum, but not us all together. We went to Wales, obviously for the mushroom picking, um, but, never been on like a proper holiday together so I'm excited I can't wait to spend a few days in this first place and I feel like it's gonna also just kind of put me at ease for the surgery because I am very nervous and then yeah we're going to Istanbul and we'll spend a bit of time there as well this year we haven't traveled at all and that is so just like weird for me like the, the only time I didn't really travel was because of COVID but like I need to get out of this country at least once a year do you know what I mean and I felt like a little bit like a chicken in a cage where I have just wanted to like escape for a little bit but I've not been able to so yeah having this little few days before we go to Istanbul in the other place it makes me really excited because it feels like I'm actually going to get a bit of a holiday hopefully next year I'll be doing way more little trips away I want to do a girls trip as well like me Sam Emma Hannah we all want to go away together so we need to figure out how we can do that as well there's just so many places that i need to see in my life like i don't understand how people can just stay in one country and just be happy there and just be content like i'm happy for you but that's not for me <laughs> if you think there's any places that i would like to visit that i would like enjoy please leave them in the comments down below because i'm always open to new places but yeah it's crazy like the fact that i've not done anything really this year exciting i guess or much of value and we're already reaching like mid-october this year has flown by even though i've been bored <laughs> i'm excited because apart from like summer just the weather like october is my favorite month i love halloween i will be back for halloween i don't really know if i'm going to be doing anything i don't i don't know how i'm going to be so hopefully i'll be okay to like do something fun like nothing crazy obviously but we'll see and then it's basically christmas you guys what the hell how did we get here and then it's new year's no how nevertheless i'm excited for halloween whatever i end up doing what are you guys doing for halloween are you guys doing anything interesting are you guys going away anywhere nice anytime soon doing anything fun for christmas how was your summer how was your summer did you guys have a hot girl summer a brat girl summer <laughs> a very demure very mindful summer let me know the weather's like this today <laughs> i feel like i've been yapping for ages so i'm gonna love you and leave you put some music on and just vibe for the rest of the journey thank you so much for coming on this drive with me it has been really nice to just yap away and feel like i'm just having a conversation with a friend just letting it all out it's been a lot less boring than it would have been if i was just 
driving on this road on my own. So thank you for keeping me company. I'll see you guys in London. Bye. Oh my god, who remembers this song? I walk a lonely road, the only one that I